Hi, thank you for being here. And in case you don't know me, let me introduce myself very briefly. My name is Nadej Susanna. I go by Nan, and I'm a cravings coach, which means that I help coaches read about all the amazing benefits of being in control around food, which means maybe zipping up your whole jeans or getting off the, the floor easily, winking at yourself in the mirror each time you see yourself and you're amazed by the results you've created for yourself. All right, so that's what I help my clients do, you know, get this amazing body bliss and the vibrant health they, that you aspire to. Thank you so much for joining the video. Just remember also something that's quite important to me is that whether you attend this live, thank you so much, or if you watch it, watch it afterwards, or if you like it, well, that's the thing. If you like it, if you comment under it, or if you share it with your audience in your stories, then each time you do that, I add your name to a draw. Uh, you get to enter it into a draw and every week when I do this live, I actually have this little glass, glass full of names, full of the names of the people who participated and who liked, commented or shared the previous live, the one that took place last Friday. So to thank you, to thank you for actually taking action, right? Um, I actually offer you a prize, which is 48 hours of free coaching with me via the Instagram DMs, and it could be voice messages, it could be written messages, whatever is the most convenient for you, and it's really fun. I'm doing that right now with a previous winner, and it's so much fun. There are so many insights around food, around, you know, this little beer at the end of the day, or the croissant that calls your name as soon as you arrive at the office. It's fascinating what we've uncovered. It's really, really good. So if you want to participate, if you want to win uh, those 48 hours of free coaching with me, well, just press play and just hit play and just play. So um, here is the draw for this week before we move on to the topic of this week, which is actually to um, use another tool to actually decrease your longing for the food so that then, yes, of course, your favorite genes are yours, right? By the end of the year, you'll be able to zip them up easily, effortlessly, and to just stroll uh, happily <laughs> with what you've created for yourself. So, but first and foremost, let's do a little drawing and find out who is going to be the winner for this week. And it is Tara. Tara, so I'm, I'm usually don't like to say names because I'm convinced that I'm butchering them. Of course, I'm counting on you to correct me. Tara, Tara Rama, I'm going to send you a message to give the good news to you and we'll take care of that. We'll agree on a time that works best for you and that's it. We'll uncover whatever uh, you're struggling with, whatever obstacles you're struggling with so that you find a strategy that suits you so that you can ach achieve your goal. And if it's to lose weight, if it's to follow a vegan diet, whatever you want, we'll, we'll work together to create that for you. And thank you so much for participating. It's so much fun. And today, on to today's um, topic. So just a reminder, I do help my clients uh, conquer their food cravings for good so that they can then, you know, buy the cute clothes they want to buy, or uh, they can actually climb the stairs without being short of breath which is so interesting, right? Because it's so painful when we, you can't do that. Or they can reduce the medication with, of course, the agreement, the approval of their physician, their doctor. And I help them achieve those results by simply uh, following a super simple three-step process. The first one is to understand. We want to understand why you want the food, right? Because if we don't understand what's going on, we can't do anything about it. It's like we can't change what we can't see. If you step into a room full of furniture, but in the dark, you can't rearrange the furniture. It's really that simple. Or we could get lucky, you know, we could actually move something and, oh, surprise, surprise, we find that it's exactly what we wanted. But do we want to be lucky or do we want to be smart about it and find if this a system that does work? That's really what I'm offering my clients, a system that does work, that is repeatable, that is sustainable, because We've experienced so many weight loss diets that actually work very well in the moment, for, provided that you stop eating or that you really have experienced no pleasure around it. 
But is that really what you want, especially in the long term, right? Do you want to live your life like this, being afraid of food, being afraid of your weight and your body and yourself? Or on the contrary, would you like to actually master a skill that's going to be so amazing as far as your body, your health is concerned, but also in so many other areas of your life? The skill of being in control of yourself, of doing what you said you would do, of eating what you said you would eat, of not eating what you said you wouldn't eat. Right. So we want that system to work. And first and foremost, we need to understand what's going on. The second step, and we're going to talk about it a bit more today, is to decrease the longing for the food. So we want the food. We want the chocolate. We want the slice of pizza. Right. And today I'm going to share an amazing tool, um, just like last week. It was different to last week. Uh, but um, well, by the way, if you want to have a look at what uh, I talked about last week, and if you can't find it in my grid, send me a DM and I'll send you also the, the link towards the my YouTube channel where you can find all the all the topics we've talked about much more conveniently, perhaps. So just feel free to send me a DM and I'll be happy to share the link with you. And next week and the following weeks, I'm going to share another tool, each one per week, so that you have one week to apply what you learn here, one week to send me messages also and to ask me more details if you need to, right? Um, so we really want to turn the knowledge into the know-how. That's why I think it's so fantastic that we have one week to experiment, to apply this tool, and then to see what's, uh, what's still um, in the way or to celebrate the success, of course, all right? Because once we nail down the practice, once we know exactly what to do to apply the knowledge, then it's so easy to decline the food because you just don't want it anymore or don't want it as much. And so it's just like, mm, yeah, I could do without, I could do with it, but honestly, you know, I'm good. And it's just declining the food is step number three after you understood why you wanted the food. You've decreased the longing for the food. And step three is that easy part where it's just like, no, thank you. And you honestly, truly believe that, right? If I were to offer you a raw onion, would you say, no, thank you easily? But if that's the case and you want to be able to do the same thing with the slice of pizza, the piece of chocolate or whatever, it is possible, right? It is possible. And I'll show you how, right? Um, so let's go back to step two, because this is the step we're focusing on right now. And um, really what we're going to do is that we're going to talk first. I'm going to tell you about the three stages where it's super interesting to understand why we will want to eat the food so that we can decrease this longing for the food and decline the food easily. Stage one. Stage one is that you notice you want the food. It can go like this. Just a little piece won't hurt. I, hurt, I hear so many of my clients say that. Of course, I have the same sentence in my head. Just a little piece won't hurt, right? Stage two is when you've eaten some food, right? You're in the middle of eating it. And you keep wanting more. And then you could very well hear yourself think, now I've learned it, might as well do eat the whole thing now, right? So the first one, stage one, is you start eating. Stage two is you continue eating. Stage three is you've stopped eating. And now the voice in your head is probably blaming you, right, for having overeaten. And it may go like this. I shouldn't have eaten so much. I can't ever resist overeating. And maybe something's very wrong with me, right? But that kind of talk, that kind of self-talk. So I'm going, let's focus on stage one to start with. You know, when we fantasize about the food, ooh, this little piece of chocolate is so good. This brownie simply melts in my mouth. I love how crunchy these cereals are and so on. Those thoughts are the one that create the desire, the longing for the food, right? To eat the chocolate, the brownie, the pizza, whatever, right? So the first thing I want to say is that really this desire is perfectly normal, right? Desire is part of life. Imagine a life without desire. First of all, it would be super boring. But then most, the, the main, most important thing is that we wouldn't have survived, right? Because if we have no desire to eat the food, we don't eat the food and then we die. That's how simple it is, right? So we do want to, to desire the food because we do want to eat the food because we do want to stay alive. So there's nothing wrong with us when we want to eat the food. There's nothing wrong with us when we desire the food. It's really a good thing, right? But the second thing is that obeying every desire to eat the food is problematic, as you already know, right? It gets problematic when we respond to every desire by eating the food, right? If your best friend presents you a tray of all the yummy foods that 
they've got available at their house and you say yes to everything and you eat everything, first of all, you'll probably end up with a stomach ache. But also, if you do that every time, you'll probably gain weight instead of stabilizing your weight, maintaining your weight or even losing weight. And also, you'll probably have a story about you in the background, in your in your head, which is there's something wrong with you, etc. Right. So it, obeying the desire is a problem. Desire itself is not a problem. Obeying every desire is a problem. Right. But then the third point I wanted to be to make clear for you is that resisting desire is also problematic, but I, I need to explain. It makes sense that we won't want not to obey desire, because we know that if we obey desire, then it's stomach ache, weight gain, poor self-image, poor self-esteem, etc. Okay, so it makes perfect sense that we don't want to obey the desire, right? That's what I teach my clients, except that there's a way of, of not obeying desire that's actually working against us instead of for us. Right. What's crucial is the way you say no to yourself, because when we tell ourselves a harsh no, like imagine um, a dictator saying, no, no, there's no discussion possible. It's a no. It's a hard no. Right. Or imagine an angry, an angry pa parent really saying no. And same thing. No conversation is, uh, is possible. It's just their only their opinion counts. Right. Not yours. Only one opinion is valuable and that's theirs, not yours. That's terrible because it's not sustainable, right? This is what I call resistance to the desire. The desire is here, but we're saying, no, no way. It shouldn't be here, right? And what's problematic is that then chances are we will want to rebel against that very authoritative um, no, right? So it may work in the moment, this is what we call maybe sometimes willpower. It may work in the moment, but it's the um, long term that's probably not going to be beneficial, right? On the contrary, if you're like me, if you're like most of my clients, when they've been very strict to, towards themselves, after a while, they just want to rebel. And when they rebel, they actually say yes to all the things. And that's when they obey actually all the desires they have, right? Because simply put, they haven't they haven't learned how to say no to themselves in a sustainable way, which makes perfect sense because they were not paying attention to the desire. They were just denying the desire, right? So this is what doesn't work, right? So the idea here, what I'm inviting you to consider is to accept this very humane desire. Instead of judging it, blaming it, instead of wanting to remove it from us, right? Because first of all, it's impossible. We cannot remove desire from our body it's part of the human thing, right? It's part of our human palette, palette, I'm not sure, sorry about that, of emotions, right? It's like your phone settings. Sure, you can add some apps, you can, you know, change the background, you can change lots of things, but basically you are not the one <laughs> building the phone, most likely, right? So the phone came with inbuilt features that you can't change. So the same thing with the emotion of desire. It's part of our settings. There's nothing we can do about that emotion per se. What we can do though is we can decrease it, right? That's what I do, that's what I do for myself, that's what I help my clients do. So it is possible, but we cannot er erase it, we cannot delete it, and we don't want to, right? Because we do want to stay alive, we do want to be, feel desire. It's nice to feel desire, desire is delicious, so we don't want to avoid it, right? Because the more we actually avoid it with this authoritative, strict, no, you shouldn't be here, actually the bigger it gets because it's not heard, right? It's not being understood. And it's really like, I love this analogy because it's it so resonates. It's the beach ball underwater. I don't know if you've ever tried doing that, but if you hold the beach ball underwater, sure, it's underwater, right? But it requires a lot of force from your part, all right? So it ends up being exhausting. And then the problem is that once you're exhausted, it just, right, goes away very, very fast and potentially can hurt you. The water is everywhere also, it's a mess, right? It's a mess because we exerted so much force one way that it goes the other way, right? There must be some physics here. I'm not a, physic a physicist, <laughs> so I can't really explain this, but you probably understand. It's exactly the same thing with food. When we resist the desire for the food, we actually go swing the other way. 
immediately or not so immediately, but it's we it creates the opposite of what we did want. All right. So it doesn't work as well as we would want it to, to work. All right. So not only the resistance to desire is vain, but it actually amplifies desire. By resisting the desire to eat the food, we actually make it stronger. So what to do? <laughs> What's the solution? There is a solution, all right? So the solution is really to accept desire without obeying it, right? And also without resisting it, without amplifying it. So what to do? How? What is the, the, the way, the process to do so? So I'm going to give you a tool, which is, um, it's called simply normalizing normalizing that yes you're feeling desire and as i said it's part of the human palette of emotions it's part of the human settings perfectly normal nothing's gone wrong but the idea is to keep it in mind to keep this in mind and to really believe in especially particular very specific um situations and to do so i had to invent for myself something that was very hard for me to do at the very beginning of this thought work journey this journey or towards feeling better I had to create a compassionate formula because it was so difficult for me to be kind to myself. I had to learn it. So that's what I'm going to give you today. If you need to be kind to yourself, if you know no idea how it, how it goes, then that's something that's going to be very useful to you. And first of all, what it does for me is that it always calms me down immediately, right? Because I'm listening to myself deeply instead of trying to change myself. And I really see that as gaslighting, pretending that it's not here. This is denying the desire. It's not working. It's just pretending that, no, 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 everything's fine. Come on, focus on something else, right? It doesn't work. But if I am kind to myself, if I understand deeply why I want the food, then I'm connecting um, a connection, a deeper connection with myself. I'm also staying with my current experience and stuff, trying to pretend it's not here. But also something that's very interesting is that it also helps me open the door a little bit towards this possibility of change, right? And that's all I'm doing. I'm just opening the door. I'm not forcing myself to change, right? As I would if I were this authoritative, strict person. And that alone, that possibility of change without doing anything else is huge. It's a huge step. It's a big step. The first of many others where eventually, of course, I'm going to change my behavior, right, towards chocolate or a piece of pizza. Anyway, it goes like this. There are two steps to, to this compassionate formula that is really going to help you decrease the desire for the food. The first step of this compassionate formula is accepting. And it goes like this. Of course, I'm feeling desire because I'm thinking this brownie simply melts in my mouth. It makes perfect sense. Anyone thinking this thought and believing this brownie simply melts in my mouth, would want to eat this food, right? Nothing's gone wrong. That's the first step. Of course, I'm feeling an emotion like desire because I'm thinking and believing a thought, right? Makes perfect sense. That's the first step, accepting. The second step of this compassionate formula is releasing. And it goes like this. And I don't have to feel that desire. I don't have to believe this brownie simply melts in my mouth. I don't even have to tell myself this brownie simply melts in my mouth. There are so many other options that are available to me, right? So the second step, releasing, is really I don't have to. I don't have to feel this emotion. I don't have to think that thought, right? So basically, to recap, the compassionate formula that's really going to help you decrease the desire is, of course, I'm feeling an emotion because I'm thinking and believing a thought, and I don't have to feel that emotion, and I don't have to think and believe that thought. That's it, right? And what's beautiful is that you can use that compassionate formula for each of the three stages I mentioned earlier. The before, when you notice that you start, you know, the, the, the before that makes you start eating the food, the during that makes you keep on eating the food, and the after when maybe, if you're like me, you tend to beat yourself up after having eaten, overeaten, maybe eaten extra food. Right. So we've seen what it, what it would be like, this compassion formula before, when you notice the desire to eat extra food. Of course, I'm feeling desire because I'm thinking, oh, this food is amazing. It makes perfect sense. And I don't have to feel the desire. I don't have to tell myself that this food is going to be amazing. That's stage one. 
Stage two, that is during when you actually want to keep on eating because probably you're thinking, oh, all's lost. I might as well finish the, you know, the packet of biscuits or whatever. I blown it over anyway. When you're feeling, when you're thinking those thoughts, perhaps you're feeling, you know, cat loose or rebellious, nonchalant, carefree, careless you well you name it it's your emotion but it would be very interesting to see what's going on for you when you believe those thoughts and then you can use the compassion formula and it goes like this of course i'm feeling nonchalant because i'm thinking oh all's lost and i don't have to feel that nonchalance i don't have to think all's lost right same thing with stage three you know afterwards when we've finished eating and maybe we tend to judge ourselves very harshly for having overeaten instead of sticking to our plan. And a sentence that I hear could be, I can't ever resist overeating. Okay, that's what some of my clients tell themselves. See, another piece of, um, another evidence that I can't ever resist overeating. And then you might feel defeated, uh, hopeless, helpless, disempowered, right? And then you can also use the compassionate formula. It goes like this. Of course, I'm feeling defeated because I'm thinking and believing I can't ever resist anything, overeating, all right? And I don't have to feel defeated. And I don't have to think and believe I can't ever resist overeating. It's not true. It feels true, that's for sure. But it, does ha it doesn't have to be true. It's not a fact. It's not something that everybody would agree on, right? It's still a story the brain's offering you. So of course you're feeling this way because you believe it, but you don't have to. I don't know about you, but each time I tell my myself this, it feels so freeing. It's such a relief, right? So that's what I have for you today. And I'm really curious how you apply this compassionate formula into your life, whether it's around food, before, when you notice that you're going to eat something, during, when you notice you want to keep on eating, or afterwards, when you've stopped, and maybe you judge yourself, right? So I'm really curious about how you apply this into your life, maybe to conquer your food cravings for good, or something else. And of course, I can help you, right? If you have any questions, if you have any comment, send me a DM, right? And uh, of course, I can also help you if you want to take this work deeper, right? If you're ready to reap all the amazing benefits of being in control of your food, around food, any food really, and really wanting to buy and, and you know, um, what, what is the word? Wear the cute clothes that you've been dying to wear forever. And if you really want to be more energetic and to really not worry so much about having diabetes or other illnesses like this, I can help you, all right? The very first step you need to take is simply book your free Crave Control consultation with me. If you're on Instagram, the link is in my bio. If you're on YouTube, I'm going to post the link under this video, right? And this free one hour Crave Control consultation call with me is really a gift from me to you. It's part of my service. I'm really happy to offer it to you. It's genuine pleasure, right? But it's also and mostly a gift from you to you because it's you giving yourself a full hour of undivided attention. You're going to focus on an issue that matters to you, right? Even if there's maybe a little voice that says, oh, come on, it's kind of vain. It's kind of superficial wanting to take care of the well look of my house. It's a bit selfish. Well, yeah. It may sound like this, but then again, you don't have to believe everything your brain tells you. So yes, you're going to gift yourself an hour of undivided attention. You're also giving to give yourself, going to give yourself an hour of kindness, the compassion we talked about to, today, right? I don't judge whatever happens to my clients. I don't judge the way they think, the way they feel towards themselves, right? I know that it's not easy. I know how hard it can be to be a human being, right? So why would I judge on top of it? I am going to teach you, I'm going to lead by example and show you what it's like not to judge yourself for one full hour, right? And also what's super fun is that you're going to be stepping into a new identity for you, that new identity of yours, when you become the one you're going to be in a few months time, the one who doesn't obey all the food cravings, but the one who simply says, no, thank you, really. 
I don't want to, to the cheesecake maybe, or to the buffet, right? Without thinking about it twice, without renegotiating in your head again and again, should I, mm, shouldn't I, but really it doesn't matter, but really I want it, oh yes, but I shouldn't, it's not good. As a, no, it will be a, no, no, thank you, I'm good. And that's it, that will be it, right? And you will be the one who winks at your reflection in the mirror or in the shop window, right? That gorgeous dress or that gorgeous suit that you've really wanted for so long, all right? If this is you, well, of course, give yourself this gift of, of your free Crave Control consultation call with me. It's simple, just book your call, I'll take care of the rest. And thank you again so much for attending this live, for watching it, maybe uh, on replay, for liking it, for commenting on it, for sharing it. Thank you for saying thank you. <laughs> Hello, Karen, so good to see you. And remember also that each time you like, comment, share this live, then your name is entered in a draw next week. So next week, I'll have my little glass jar full of names. Ooh, so many names. And then the winner is going to have 48 hours of free coaching via Instagram on the DMs, whether it's written coaching or voice audio messages. It's going to be amazing. I'm just going to guide you so that you decide what's best for you, so that you become more of the person you want to be, right? Maybe somebody who doesn't eat whenever there's food around, just because there's food, oh, there's food, let's eat, right? You won't be on autopilot anymore, but instead you're going to savor the food. And also you're going to be delighted by your reflection in the mirror. You're going to be delighted and amazed by the weight, the number you see on the scale, right? And you will know how to optimize pleasure. I'm not inviting you to sacrifice yourself and to live a life deprived of pleasure. No, that's not me, <laughs> right? I learned how to feel pleasure. I learned how to give myself pleasure with food or with anything else. And of course, I want the same for you. I want you to optimize pleasure. And it means enjoying the food and enjoying the body and the health you want. You can have both. Fancy that. Isn't it amazing? So if that's what you want, please share, like, and comment or comment on this live. And thank you so much. Don't forget to tag me if it's not obvious, because otherwise I won't know. <laughs> and thank you again so much for being here with me. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I love you. Take care. Bye.